Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is Nigel Goes to Space. I haven't been to space yet, but recently I have come back from the most extraterrestrial environment on the Earth. As you can see from my polar garb, it's somewhere which is extremely cold and extremely unfriendly to human life. And that is the South Pole. And the reason I went there was not just for the adventure, but because the South Pole is so cold, so arid, so lifeless, that it's the nearest that we have on Earth to the planet Mars. I was lucky enough to be travelling with Buzz Aldrin, the pilot of the first mission to land on the moon. And now what he wants to do is to see a spacecraft go to Mars, taking human beings to the Red Planet. And his idea of travelling to the South Pole was to see what it's like to live and to work in an inhospitable environment. Some were very cold, some were very harsh, some were with low atmospheric pressure, some were, in other words, very like the planet Mars. We met in a lush temperatures of Cape Town in South Africa. We went up to Table Mountain for the day to get to know each other. We checked out our equipment and our clothing and we boarded our transport to the White Continent, a Russian Aleutian 76 transport plane. Inside it's absolutely huge. Uh, the passengers on board were largely scientists travelling to uh, Russian bases, to a British base, to an Indian base. But it's so loud in there you can hardly hear yourself speak. A few hours into the flight, we passed a landmark. We crossed the Antarctic Circle. We were entering the region of the Earth where there's six months of continuous daylight and six months of continuous darkness. We were there uh, during the light part of the year, so we would never experience any darkness. We landed at a Russian airstrip called Novolazarevskaya, which um, is close to the Russian base there. We were a group of 12, including Buzz and myself, the same number as the total number of people who've walked on the moon. And the next day we were off on the trip to the South Pole on a much smaller plane this time. We took off, we flew over the mountains which surround Antarctica like a ring. And once we were over the mountain ranges, it was a huge plateau. The centre of Antarctica is just one vast ice plateau where the ice is over a thousand metres thick everywhere. It's just plain white ice as far as you can see. But we couldn't get to the South Pole in one trip. We had to refuel part of the way there at a place called FD83, fuel depot at 83 degrees south. And there's really nothing there, an airstrip, a row of tents, and lots of red painted barrels of fuel. So after refueling, we were off on our way south, south, and further south, as far south as we could go. Our plane was unpressurised, it was cold inside. To look out, we actually had to scrape the ice away from the windows. But then we were there, coming down on an airstrip at the very bottom of planet Earth. And the first thing we saw breaking that white plain all around us were two alien-looking structures. The first is a scientific experiment designed to look for particles coming from space that zip through the Earth. It's called Ice Cube. And the second, the strange telescope looking structures looking up into space to pick up remnants of radiation coming from the Big Bang, heading through the cold of space to the cold of Antarctica, the best place on Earth to study the distant parts of the universe. Our plane came to a halt. We came down the steps and Buzz stepped out, not onto an alien world, but to the most extraterrestrial place on Earth, the surface of the South Pole. The thick ice cap beneath my feet was moving over the rocks below, and that's carrying the ceremonial pole and the flags away from the true axis of rotation of the Earth. And every January the 1st, the scientists go out and they work out where that axis of the Earth is, so they put a, a board there and an American flag. So I trudged over there at several hundred metres, so I could feel I was at the exact bottom of the Earth, where all the lines of longitude uh, converge together, where all the time zones meet, where the very centre of the bottom of the Earth is. Hi, I'm at the South Pole, the very bottom of our planet Earth. It's where if you imagine where the pole of rotation goes all the way through, so the Earth is spinning around me where I am, and the sun goes around the sky, seeming to be roughly the same height every day. Here, there are six months of total darkness, and then six months of total light. And what I'm standing on is frozen ice that's accumulated over millions of years. What looks like a solid surface here is 2,000 metres deep of ice and 1,000 metres of rock underneath where we get down to sea level. So, way the pole is cold, it's minus.
minus 32 degrees at the moment, and it's a pretty important place for people to be to live and work. But scientists come here because of the South Pole, there are unique things they can do, looking at the sky at night, looking at the magnetic field of the Earth, and investigating particles space. Nearby, there is a giant scientific base. It's called the Amundsen-Scott Scientific Base, named after the first two explorers to reach the South Pole over a century ago. And it's run by the Americans, and they gave us, of course, a wonderful welcome. Buzz Aldrin is a national hero to them. Uh, we were brought inside and really fated, and Buzz was surrounded by people asking him, of course, loads of questions about the moon and about space and about the plans to go to Mars. And we had the chance to get a unique stamp in our passports. But for all the comfort inside the base, it was going to be an arduous journey back. We couldn't do a flight all the way back to our base at sea level in one go. We would have to stop at that fuel depot and spend the night in tents at minus 24 degrees. Uh, the doctor said they checked Buzz over before we left. He had uh, slightly low oxygen levels in his blood and they thought it would be safest for him. He is after 86 to travel back immediately to sea level. And there was a flight leaving from the base back to Christchurch in New Zealand. So Buzz was put on board there and travelled from the South Pole to New Zealand and comfort. But he had achieved his aim. Buzz has been to the moon. He's been to the North Pole. He's been in a submersible down to the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. And now he's been to the South Pole. He's been to the place on Earth that's nearest to his next dream destination, the planet Mars. The rest of us had a few more days staying in our base near the coast at a, a rocky oasis between the sea ice and the polar cap. And there's no sign of life here apart from the odd inquisitive bird flying in from the sea. If you look at these reddish brown rocks, really like Mars under your feet, and you turn them over, there's no sign of life. We have a picnic on the Earth. You turn over a rock, you'll see an ant or a millipede or a woodlouse, some kind of life there, um, obviously growing shoots of vegetation. But here, there's nothing. On all my time in there, walking around these rocks, I found just what was probably one small patch of greenish lichen. And I can really appreciate that when scientists are searching for life on Mars, whether it's a robotic craft or people going there, you're going to have to turn over an awful lot of stones before you're going to find any life at all, even if it exists on the red planet. And we also had some fun times. We learned to climb sheer cliffs of ice using just ice axes and crampons on our feet. We also explored cliffs a hundred meters above the frozen sea ice below, roped to each other over, for me, I suffer a bit from a fear of heights. Uh, it's really um, quite intimidating rock climbs, but uh, the views just made it all worthwhile. We also went down to the sea and we explored some eerie blue caves in cracks through the sea ice. Uh, really beautiful formations of frozen stalactites and stalagmites and of frozen ice all around us, looking like a miniature tunnel uh, corrugated on the edges with the blue light shining through it. As well as the American base in the frozen waste of the South Pole, we visited the Russian base near the coast on the rocky oasis. And here they're making measurements of the sky, of the Earth's atmosphere, of the weather. And they're also checking out the moon because the Earth's light is reflected from the dark side of the moon. We call it the old moon in the new moon's arms. But they're measuring that scientifically to tell how much radiation, how much light the Earth is reflecting out into space, because that tells us more about how the Earth is warming up as carbon dioxide builds up in the Earth's atmosphere. And we saw global warming in action. We saw an icy stream flowing down from the melting ice cap. And our guide said that in all his years in Antarctica, he's never seen anything like this before. The Antarctic really is warming up. Amid this Martian landscape, something alien was lurking. We were staying in bubble-shaped pods, six of them for accommodation, on the edge of a frozen lake called Witchaway Lake with the ice cap behind. There were also communal pods for showers, a dining area, a living area, a place to set up your computer and to change. 
and this really is a model for how people might live on Mars. Now, on Mars, the atmospheric pressure is so low that these pods would all have to be pressurized. But Buzz was very impressed by the organization here, uh, the way everything worked together. He just said that on Mars, a Martian base, you'd have to have the pods a bit closer together. After all this excitement, which really was a trip of a lifetime, we reluctantly had to leave the White Continent and board that transport plane to head back to Cape Town. But there's one final thrill. How about this for our transport from the terminal, which is the yellow shed, out to our waiting aircraft? Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> This really was the most amazing experience of my life and I'm sure the most memorable I'll have up until my trip into space in a couple of years' time. In the meantime, subscribe to Naked Science and to keep up with everything that's going on, do send me your questions, any curiosity you have about space, about the universe, about stars, planets, send them to me at Nigel Goes to Space. <laughs>